Hey y'all, Dawn here with Seven Acres Homestead. I'm just going to make this a little short video today to show you guys um, what I'm doing uh, while I'm I'm over here processing my turnips and turnip greens. But I wanted to get my granola going in the food dehydrator. Um, and you do not have to have a food dehydrator to make this. I have done it overnight in my oven on the warm setting. Um, or I do it on the dehydrator around 150 degrees overnight, and it comes out just absolutely perfect. Um, but I want to show you what all I put in here. Um, I just have uh, old-fashioned oats. I have coconut flakes. These are sweetened. You can use sweetened or unsweetened. I have toasted almonds. And that is my basic dry ingredients for my homemade granola. Now, um, you can add raisins. Uh, you can add any kind of nuts you want in here. Uh, you can add wheat germ if you want to add a little bit extra stuff in there. Um, uh, you can add pretty much anything you like in your granola in there. Uh, so what I've done is this is my, my pan that I'm cooking my granola in. And so I filled this pan because I wanted to make sure I didn't do too much and not have enough room in the pan. And so um, what I've got in here is the oats and the coconut and the toasted almonds. Okay, in this bowl, I have some coconut oil because it makes it a little bit crispier if you put a little bit of oil in there. I've got uh, raw honey. i got a little bit of maple syrup for flavor. You can or cannot add that if you want to. Um, and then I add a little bit of extra brown sugar because I kind of like a really a good sweetness to my granola. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stir this up. And then we are going to pour it over our oat mixture. And I am going to um, stir that up good and make sure everything is nice covered with the wet ingredients. And then I will show you guys um, how I'm going to set up the dehydrator to, to finish this out. Okay, guys. So I needed a bigger container to put my stuff in because I don't want to get it all over the place. So I'm using this bag. And here is all of my dry ingredients. And I did just wash my hands, so yes, I'm using my hands. And I'm just going to kind of mix this up a little bit. And just try to make sure that most of my bites of granola have some of everything in it. And as I go through and do this, I will kind of look at it and decide whether or not I feel like I need more of something. Um, I do really kind of feel like I don't have enough coconut in here. So I'm going to go ahead and add some more coconut. And again, there's no real recipe for this. And I will put the ingredients in the description box so that you guys can have a list of everything I put in there. But I'm going to be honest with you. And I, I know y'all see me do this and it drives everybody nuts. But I'm kind of a... a eyeball it when I cook things sometimes and but I, I'll do my best to put as close to what I ended up using in here as I possibly can on the description box. I also want some more almonds in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and put pretty much this whole container of almonds in here. Because I like the oats and that's really the main basis for your granola but but I like the protein from the almonds and I like the, the sweet crunchiness that you get from the coconut. It's, it really gives it an amazing flavor. And if you absolutely hate coconut and, you know, you despise it and don't want it anywhere near your mouth, 
then you can definitely make this without the coconut. But I personally feel like it just adds a really, really good sweet, crunchy element to it that I really, really like. Okay, so I have mixed up my wet ingredients. And I'm going to pour it over the top here. We're going to get all of this goodness in here. Yeah, all this is the part that makes it nice and sweet and crunchy. So I definitely want to make sure that I get all of it in there. Now again, <laughs> believe it or not, I'm going to start mixing this with my hands. And it is going to be sticky, sticky, sticky. That's okay. Because I can wash my hands. And what I'm going for here is just kind of a, a sticky coating of this on here. I don't want so much of the wet ingredients that this is like an oatmeal mush. Okay, I just want a slight coating on everything to give it that nice, sweet, crunchy texture that we're going to get from this. Okay? Now, see, it's still pretty sticky. And, and I want to make sure everything gets a good coating. So you don't want big blobs of dry oats, and you don't want big blobs of just stickiness in there either. So I'm going to continue to stir this and mix this together. Now, could you do this with a spoon? Yeah. Could you put it in a mixer and do it? Probably. <laughs> but... I just like to do it like this. Now, see, I've got a, a nice, good, sticky coating. But to me, this is a little bit too much sticky. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back and put a few extra oats in here. And kind of just mix all that in. You want it kind of like sand if you're doing a sand castle. Um... You don't want it so wet that it's just blobby, but you, you want it, if you pick it up and hold it, you want it to kind of stick together just a little bit. Um, and so that was why I put a little bit extra oats in here. And after you do this a couple times, you'll start learning what the perfect texture is for the way you like it. It's one of those things you kind of have to do it a couple times before you start really getting the, the idea of what you want to do. Okay, so I've got all this mixed in. It's sticky, but it's not a big blob. It, it'll still kind of move around and, and do some stuff. And I, I'm going to show you guys how I pack it in the pan also. Okay, y'all. I'll put my pan on a uh, towel just because I don't want it to slide around as I'm dumping this in here. And I'm just literally going to pick up my tub and I'm just going to start dumping this in my pan. And you can use your hands to kind of guide this in here. And it is okay if your pan is completely full like this. Like, you don't have to spread this out on a cookie sheet or anything, especially if you're cooking it the way I'm cooking it. Um, I do want to make sure that it's not overflowing. But I don't think I'm going to have that problem. I think I'm going to get everything in here. Well, you know what? I take that back. I'm going to put some of this in a, another dish. Since I added that additional coconut and stuff, I really have a lot here. Okay, so we're going to get another pan. Now, I want you guys to notice that I am not packing this down in there. Because we're not making granola bars. Now, if you were wanting to do granola bars, you would pack this down in there real tight. And you would probably spread it out in a bigger pan to make them not as tall as these are going to be. Um, but since I'm wanting loose granola for cereal and yogurt and things like that, I'm not packing it down. Because after it's cooked, I'm going to come through here and I'm going to break it all up in little chunks. So let's grab our other pan that we're going to use. Okay, so I'm going to put the rest of this in this other pan. 
And I'll probably level this out a little bit. I'll probably put a little bit from that other pan in here so they're about the same height because I want them to cook about the same amount of time. So I'm going to do that right now. Okay, so as y'all can see, I went ahead and added a little bit from the big pan into the smaller pan so that they're about the same thickness in both pans, and that way they'll cook about the same in the food dehydrator. So here in a second, I'm going to come show you guys um, how I'm going to load and set the food dehydrator in order to cook these. Okay, guys, I'm in here in my utility room, and uh, I've got both of my trays of granola in here. And as you've noticed, I kind of set them... Um, with quite a bit of space in between them and I want to make sure that how I have them loaded in here you have air, good air circulation going all the way around both pans. So uh, I have separated them quite a bit and then that way when that fan back there starts going it's going to circulate that air around these really really well. Now what I'm setting it on is this. Uh, by the way this is a magic meal food dehydrator. Um, it is the 10 tray one. Of course, I think it says 11 trays, but on the description on Amazon, but it's really not. It's 10 trays. And um, all I have to do on this, and this is real easy, is you click the on button. It automatically sets to 10 hours. However, I'm going to set this to 12 hours. So every time I push that button, it's going to up that a little bit. Then I'm going to hit my temperature button. It automatically sets at 158, which is actually just about perfect for this. So I'm probably just going to leave it on 158. And I'm going to leave this in here for 12 hours. And then we will come back to it and I will show you guys um, how I break it up and, and what this looks like when it gets done. Okay, guys. Um, this is my two pans of uh, granola. They're done. They're nice and golden brown. They're nice and crispy. And I'm going to show you guys what I do with this um, to store it and explain what we use it for. Okay, so to break this up, what I usually do is I use this tool right here, which this is like a pastry cutter. And I go through and I kind of get the sides loose a little bit now you can spray these pans down with some spray cooking oil or put a little bit of something on there but I usually don't um, okay so I've got the sides in and normally what I'll do is I'll just come through with this and just kind of break this up into pieces You hear how nice and crispy that sounds? And that's the way I like mine. Some people like theirs chewy. If you like yours chewy, then you don't cook it as long as I did. I did 12 hours in the dehydrator. And I would say, if you don't want yours as chewy as I have mine, then put it in there for four or five hours. And then come back and take some out, let it cool down, taste it, and see if it's the texture that you like. That's what I do with a lot of the stuff that I make is I just kind of do a little bit of a trial and error. And it's better to, to cook it not enough and have to put it back in there than to cook it too much and say, oh, that's too crunchy. I don't like that. Now, one reason that I like mine crunchy is because I like to eat this as cereal in a bowl of milk. And if you like raisins in your granola cereal, you can always throw a handful of raisins in your bowl with your cereal. Now, you can add raisins to this when you make it as well, just so you know that your raisins will be a lot harder and a lot chewier than they will be if you just put them in your cereal bowl as you go. Okay. So this is my first jar that I'm filling up with this. I think I'm going to need two jars. This is a half-gallon jar. 
And what I do is I put a desiccant pack in with this so that it will not get a bunch of moisture in there and get too soft later on. Because this has no added preservatives in it at all. So you just want to make sure that you keep it in good shape. Now if you start to realize that it's getting some moisture in there and it's too, it's not as crunchy as it once was, you can always pour it back in your pan, put it back in the dehydrator, get that moisture out, and then put it in a jar with a discant pack. So what I'm doing now is I have my funnel up here. And I'm just taking my hands and just dumping this right down in this jar. If I come across any pieces that I think are too big, I will just break those up with my fingers. Okay, but this is crunched up pretty darn good, so I don't know that I'm going to have that issue. Oh, I take that back. I got this big piece right here. So I'm just going to kind of crunch it up with my hands a little bit. Now you may like some big chunks in there, depending on what you're doing with this. Now I'm going to tell you guys while I'm filling this jar all the things that I use this for. I, again, I like to use it for cereal. It makes a really good granola cereal in the morning. Uh, again, you can add any kind of fruit to it you want. You can add raisins if you like a, a raisin granola type cereal. And uh, you can add blueberries, you can add strawberries, you can add any kind of fruit you want to this. Uh, I have made this granola before with freeze-dried fruit that I added in the jar as I was putting it in the jar. So that is also something else that you can do that would be good for cereal. Just loosening up a little bit of this that stuck to the bottom. So another thing that I use this for is I like to layer it with vanilla yogurt. This is the best granola layered with vanilla yogurt. It's my absolute, one of my favorite snacks. Um, I will usually layer it um, with granola and then I'll put fruit in it. And if you don't have fresh fruit around, a lot of times I will keep frozen blueberries uh, in a baggie in the freezer. And then I will just dump some of those um, in with my granola and my yogurt. Now again, use any flavor, uh, granola or uh, fruit, I mean, sorry, again, you can use any flavor fruit that you really want in that. Another thing that this is really good for is to make like a crisp with fruit in it, like, a, like an apple crisp or something, and the easy way to do that is to pour a can of um, pie filling in a little pan like this one we just used and dump your granola on top and just bake it in the oven until your pie filling gets hot. Um, you also can do that with your homemade pie filling if you'd like to do that. If you also want a crunchy topping on any kind of desserts, this makes a really good crunchy topping on top of muffins, cakes, whatever. Um, so this is a 9 by 9 pan. And it yielded me, when I filled it all the way up to the top, a whole half gallon jar. So I've got my 9 by 14 pan over here that should yield me two more jars, just like this, and this granola. So um, this is an easy snack. You can just eat a handful of it by itself or mix it with other nuts or um, add uh, chocolate chips or M&Ms and fruit to make a trail mix. Um, this is just so versatile for so many things. So um, thank you guys for hanging out with me today while I'm doing this. As you can hear, I've been sick for a few days, and today is the day that we're frozen in. So I'm doing indoor stuff while we're frozen in. So uh, thank you guys for watching. I appreciate it. And uh, let me know if you make this and what all you put in it. I'd like to know uh, how your version comes out.